Welcome to Paul's Toolbox. Today I'm going to cover making some frames for my canvas pictures. I don't want to see this white part on the outside. It wasn't painted all the way around. It wasn't wrapped. So I really want to put a nice little frame on here and I'm going to paint it to match my uh, picture here. This is one of the frames that I've made and it's very simple. This Insta adhesive is 2P10 and it's an excellent adhesive. It's really quick dries very strong. I didn't even have to nail any of it. I just glued it together. And this makes a nice little frame. And at the end of this video, I'm going to talk about this a little bit and give away a few of these. So I have three winners from the last video, and uh, I'm going to have three more for this one. I'm going to be using Yellow Pine Wayne's Coat. And this cost me uh, $7 for an eight-foot board, just under a dollar a foot. This is a, a one by six that's notched. And the great thing about this is it already has a lip that can go around there, so you don't have to worry about that uh, notching it out. We're going to take this and I'm going to rip it out a little bit bigger than the other one. So we're going to make this uh, a little wider since this painting's wider than my other one was. So what we're going to do is cut this three inches back because that's how wide I want this uh, face trim to be. When you pick out your boards, you make sure to get straight boards because you don't want to have this thing all wavy. So what you'll do is you'll take your eye and set right on the edge of this board and look down it. If you see curves on it, take it and put it on the side and find a good board. Uh, also this way, you don't want to have a lot of bows on it. If it has a big curve on this way too, you're going to get, discard it. Try to get the straightest board you can. With the board upside down, I take a speed square and just mark off right by the corner. Well, I'll make sure I get it on there right. Okay? So this line right here will go right to the edge of this. I want it a little bit larger, so I'm going to bring it out. That way, I'm a little bit wider in there and I don't have to worry about uh, being too tight and it won't fit on the canvas. You're not going to cut from this part. You're going to cut from this part. This is going to overlap, and that's where we want this to meet. So we'll put a speed square on here. Whoop, we'll go this way. Now, this is going to be my outside miter joints. We will take this one and do the same thing. We'll match it up though. Set our boards together, make sure they're exact. They match up with each other. I always leave the line, just a tiny bit of the line right here. That way I know I'm exact. If you cut that line off, you don't know where you're at, and you'll also have too short of a piece if you, if you cut that line. Use a really sharp pencil and make a fine line and just follow that line. I have my Works Pegasus saw horses, and I linked them together so I have one good sized table. Now I'll take the top and the side and put it together. And what we're going to do is match these up perfectly. So. You don't have much time when you set it in place. You want it on a nice flat surface. This kit comes with an activator and you can use a little spray bottle top if you want with it. I like to keep the brush on here. It has a little brush for tiny things. And uh, I'll use my can right here of aerosol to, uh, to bind a lot of things because this lasts a long time and the spray, spray goes on there real easily. It's real fast. So I'm gonna spray this. That's all you do. You take your gel and you're going to set it on this side right here. And just hold it like that for a few seconds. We'll take it and turn it this way so we can glue this piece in. And I'll put my gel on here. 
Take this and make sure I line it up right. Get them tight and flat with each other. That's it. Two down, one to go. These tables by Works are really cool. They make things a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is I want this to grab or sit on it in two places. So we'll take this loose. You have little clips here, rubber clips that hold it together. And I'm going to put them side by side. This way to give me a little bit more width. You especially want to have a little bit more time when putting your last one in. Like I said, that's why I'm using the gel. The thicker it is, the longer it takes to set up. So I'll spray it right here. I'll spray it here. Put it closer to the bottom than the, rather than the top so you don't have it ooze out the top. So I'll set it down. Make sure I get this one tight. All right. Put this face down on here. Now we see what we have. I'm going to go ahead and just glue these together. So let's get the canvas out of the way. We're going to do this the same way. Just spray our activator on. Put a little glue on this side. Hold them tight. Do this for each corner. So what I'm going to do is set my canvas down in here. I'll have glue all the way around. I'm going to push this down on top. If you have clamps, you can clamp it until it dries. I'm going to use my nail gun. You can use hand nails. And uh, if you want, just pre-drill a couple of tiny holes and put some one-inch nails or inch and a quarter nails in there, and that's going to hold this until the glue dries. I want to take my canvas and set it right in the middle here. All right. Set this right down, and it should fit pretty snug on here. With my inch and a quarter nails, I'll just pop it right down. Well, there you go. Next, I'll just sand it down a little bit and uh, put some paint on it. This is going to look sharp. These smaller paintings take a, a small trim, so you won't have to nail these. You can glue the whole thing. The reason why I um, sometimes will nail the larger one is because I don't want to use that instant glue on a big large panel and, and, and use up all my glue. For this one, I'm going to go ahead and use the activator spray bottle. It's the same thing as the spray can. It's just in a pump spray. I'm using the, the gel. It's the thickest one. I'm using Rust-Oleum truck bed coating. This stuff is really cool. I'm going to black out the back and the sides right here. And in the face, the face frame, I'm going to go ahead and stain or uh, paint it with a wipe down. And I'll show you how that's done. It's real easy. You can do this any kind of way you want. I just think this will give a nice look. That's what I did to my other ones, and it really came out nice. My truck bed paint is dry, and now I'm ready to go ahead and uh, finish the front. If you get a little bit of overspray on there, just take 120 grit sandpaper and knock it off. Now this is only going to take a couple of minutes. Right here, I just take a rag and I'll have a little bit of water. Just 
Doesn't matter, just a tiny bit of water, you just want to dampen your rag a little bit. So I'm going to take the blue first. I might not even use the green. Let's just see what it comes out like. Now when I rub it on, I'm going to come back over on here and rub it, rub it back down and it's going to show the grain. So we're just taking, wet it a little bit, rub it in. I'll probably just go with the blue on this. I think it's going to look fine. And then you just take it and rub it a few times. And wherever you have grain, the grain will show up on there. Next, we'll take our, our hangers and just screw them in place. Well, I completed all of them. And on this one, I used the truck bed coating on the whole face of it instead of just the sides. And I came back and I painted with latex paint. All I did was took a couple of wild colors because that's what, what I have in this painting. And uh, I have an artist brush. I just dabbed it. And then I just took some squiggly lines and put on there just to give it some color so it matches the painting. Now, on these, I'm just going to take and drill a tiny hole on the side and put a tack, some small nails in here to hold it in place. There's a number of ways you can attach it. If you wanted to, if you had a painting and, uh, or a picture that you wanted to put on here, and you, you could get glass cut to match this, which is real inexpensive. And then you'll just get some glazing points made for glass, and you can pin that in here from the sides. So it's just like a regular frame. It works just like a regular frame, but it's a lot cheaper. When I take these little nails and I put them in here, I'll, I'll leave the head exposed from it. I don't drive them all the way in there. That way I can take some pliers and just pull it out like a pin and remove this anytime I want. So we're ready to go ahead and hang these. Okay, I'm going to be giving away three of these kits. And let me tell you something about these. This kit is fantastic for all types of things. I couldn't tell you how many things I fixed with it. You can glue back porcelain, plastic, any, just about anything that breaks, you can glue it back with this. That activator really makes a difference when you put that together with this. It's a two-part um, glue. So make sure you comment in the box below because I'm going to choose from three of them from the 150 comments, the first 150 comments that I get. Now, if you're 160 or 180, go ahead and uh, drop a comment in because when I do get extras, I will pick out somebody from there, just like I did on the last video. I was supposed to give out two, and I wound up giving out three. This time, I'm going to give out three. You never know. I might give out four. So, go ahead and drop a comment for me and hit like. Well, that's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out paulstoolbox.com for all my archive videos, and I will see you on the next project. It's time for me to change my flag because this one is not looking as bright as it should. I'd like to give special thanks to our military personnel for serving our country in good times and in bad.